Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, this session is quick revision of power electronics applications. In this session, uh, I would like to brush up some important applications related to this power electronics. So first part, single phase full wave AC controller. As the name indicates, this is a full wave AC controller. This is the corresponding circuit diagram at the input side we are supposed to apply Vm sin omega t which is a standard uh, sine wave signal. We are considering two SCRs, two thyristors T1 and T2. R is the load connected, load resistance connected at the output. These are the corresponding waveforms. We will consider that after firing angle alpha a particular SCR will be triggered. Now at the input side we are applying pure sinusoidal waveform like this. This is from 0 to pi, we have positive half cycle. From pi to 2 pi, we have negative half cycle. During positive half cycle, this terminal will be positive, this terminal will be negative. Due to this, this thyristor T1 will be switched on, T2 will be switched off because this point is connected to a positive terminal. So, the flow of current will be like this from this supply towards T1 and then through this resistance R. Actually, the conduction of this SCR should take place for entire positive half cycle. But as I said, we are firing SCR at a particular angle alpha. So conduction starts from alpha and you are getting this kind of waveform, which is similar to that of a positive half cycle. But the conduction starts from alpha because we are firing that SCR at an angle alpha. Then in the negative half cycle, this was in the positive half cycle. In the negative half cycle, the polarity gets reversed. So this becomes minus, this becomes plus. Due to this plus polarity, the conduction will be like this. Like this. And in this case, T2 is turned on and T1 is turned off. That's what I have written in this diagram. This is the graph of V0 versus T. That is output voltage versus time. This is the graph of output current versus time. During positive half cycle, that means alpha to pi, T1 is on and T2 is off. Then again during negative half cycle but after pi plus alpha ideal negative half cycle starts from pi but we are firing SCR uh, after angle alpha so during negative half cycle that means from pi plus alpha till 2 pi this T2 is on this SCR is on and T1 is off. This is the way how this single phase full wave AC controller works. Now let us discuss application of power electronic devices which is fan regulator using track actually this is this application is for the combination of uh, diac and track which is used to regulate the speed of a fan this is the corresponding circuit diagram this is the uh, fan motor which is connected to single phase ac we are using two resistors r1 and r2 and one capacitor c this is the combination of diac and track now Initially, this value of potentiometer R2, this, this R2 is a potentiometer variable resistance. It is kept at the maximum position. Then once you start varying it, uh, there is one particular term which is called RC time constant. So this RC time constant will be decided by values of R1, R2 and C. Just as you as you move this position of wiper, the uh, value of RC time constant is changed. Initially R2 maximum, tha. Uske baad, hum log jase wiper ka position change karenge. the value of RC time constant will vary and the charging of capacitor starts taking place. Once the charging of capacitor reaches up to the sufficient level, that means once it reaches up to the level which will overcome the break over voltage of diac, then this diac starts conducting and it will apply trigger pulse to this track then track starts conducting once the track starts conducting this uh, uh, current from this single phase uh, AC supply will pass through this fan motor and it will follow the path like this now we are using diac and track so <clears throat> as i said this RC time constant can be varied and accordingly the triggering of this track can be varied so fan speed can be regulated and this diac and track both are bi-directional devices so we can well control the speed during positive and negative half cycles of the single phase AC supply. Next application is electronic balance circuit. Basically electronic balance circuit is used to stabilize the voltage and current across uh, the electric tubes. So it is used for stabilizing currents in electric tube supply circuit. 
it can be considered as a choke without any starter uh, if you are talking about the fluorescent lamp then initial gas discharge in inside the fluorescent lamp takes place by applying initial very high voltage which is around 1000 volt after that the control unit takes uh, part and it maintains it it keeps the voltage across the fluorescent lamp below 240 volt so after that this electronic circuitry maintains the supply voltage i mean maintains the voltage across the lamp and current through the lamp at a particular level and accordingly the operation can be controlled so this is the block diagram of electronic uh, balance circuit uh, emi filter as the name indicates is used to reduce down the emi effect that is electromagnetic interference effect rectifier converts ac signal into dc signal then power factor correction as the name indicates is used for the correction of power factor this high frequency oscillator stage converts DC signal into a square root type of waveform whose frequency is high frequency 20 kilohertz to 80 kilohertz. So this high frequency signal is applied to the tube. So instantaneous switching of the tube takes place and once the fluorescent lamp or electric tube is switched on then a particular current and voltage is maintained. So uh, after discharge process, just now we discussed initially the voltage across the fluorescent lamp is 1000 after discharge, the voltage is maintained below 240 volt. Then advantages of this circuit, I mean electronic balance circuit, starters are not required then uh, due to higher frequency operation, uh, instantaneous switch on uh, takes place. Uh, then no flickering is there and uh, it saves the energy. So it can be used uh, uh, for the energy saving purpose. This advantages includes it's bulky in nature and it's a uh, higher cost. So this is about the block diagram and working of electronic ballast circuit. Next application is LED lamp driver circuitry. This is the simplest circuitry in which we will discuss how this uh, circuitry is designed to operate LED lamp which is operating at 6 volt supply. From this end, we are applying 230 volt AC supply. This is a step down transformer. We are using two diodes D1 and D2, which forms the full wave uh, bridge rectification. So, output of these diodes will be a DC signal. It is applied to the further part, that is to the lamp, to the uh, capacitor, and so on. One more connection is taken from secondary of transformer through D3 through R1 and it is connected to the positive terminal of battery. So this signal is used to charge the battery. As I said, the output DC signal, uh, output of rectifier is applied to the upper plate of capacitor. So this transformer is a step down transformer whose output is around 6 volt. So due to this, the charging of this capacitor start taking place. Now observe this diagram carefully. This cathode terminal of SCR is connected to this point to the upper plate of capacitor whose voltage is around 6 volt. Whereas the lower point, I mean this anode terminal of SCR is connected to the battery terminal. This cathode voltage is slightly greater than the battery voltage. So reverse bias of SCR takes place because of which whatever this 6 volt which was available at this point as well as at this point this will be appearing across the lamp and glowing of lamp takes place this is the way how this simple circuitry works now its advantages includes it is a low power consumption application size is small then it is a high speed operation and uh, in other uh, lamp circuitries like light reflectors are required in this case light reflectors are not uh, required disadvantages includes it is basically a temperature sensitive uh, circuitry and it is also voltage sensitive circuitry so this is about led lamp driver circuit now let us discuss the dc drives first we will uh, discuss about the definition of dc drive it is a circuit which converts ac to dc to drive a particular motor. Now, if we are talking about single phase separately excited DC motor, then this is the simplified diagram of such a motor, which is single phase and separately excited. Meaning of word separately excited means armature windings and field windings are powered by separate connection. This is diagram. This field winding. This is supply connection. This is armature winding which is connected to different supply so they are separately excited now these are the different equations armature voltage is given as ea is k phi omega m omega m is the rotational speed of a motor 
then motor terminal voltage is vt which is ea plus ia ra ra is armature resistance ia is current passing through armature windings then armature current ia is vt minus ea upon ra now whenever there is increase in the load this load increases then the speed of motor gets reduced that means value of omega m reduces so this value omega m is reduced because of which from equation 1 the value of ea gets reduced ea is armature voltage look at equation 3 ea is reduced that means this term is reduced but it is getting subtracted from vt so armature current increases due to increase in armature current the required torque more torque will be developed and the speed will be achieved so this is the way how this separately a uh, single phase separately excited dc motor works now let us talk about the bldc motor drive circuit so this is the simplified circuit which is required to drive the bldc motor bldc as the name indicates it is brushless dc motor this is simple diagram here we are applying dc supply then this is a full bridge inverter output of which is connected to bldc motor there is one sensor which is a rotation rotor position sensor as the name indicates it gives uh, the position of a rotor to the controller circuit then controller circuit adjusts the values uh, that is values of phase delay uh, delta and uh, the firing angle alpha so bldc is a synchronous motor having permanent magnets on the rotor and armature winding is placed on the stator then this armature winding which is placed on the stator is connected to the dc supply is connected to this dc supply through the inverter rotor is having permanent magnet which is which is containing same number of poles as that of the stator. This rotor positional sensor that is RPS provides information about position of a shaft to the controller circuitry. This full bridge converter provides the variable frequency and variable amplitude which is the requirement of uh, driving requirement for driving the BLDC motors. Its advantages includes higher efficiency. We are not using brushes, so maintenance is not required uh, and uh, sparking problems are avoided. Disadvantages includes certain additional sensors are required like uh, rotor position sensor and the circuit is comparatively complex. Next is V by F control which is used for three phase induction motor drive. First we'll discuss the definition of AC drive. So AC drive is a device which is used to control the speed of electric motor like induction motor and it will improve the process control system. Now in case of induction motor the synchronous speed is given by 120 F by P in the bracket 1 minus S. P represents poles, S represents slip and the flux phi in the air gap is directly proportional to ratio V by F. From this equation, we can say that simply by changing the frequency, we can change the speed. But if we just change the frequency and keep V constant, then flux phi will also change and it may happen that there will be core saturation. To avoid this, both V and F are changed. They are varied so that the ratio V by F is kept constant so that the flux phi in the air gap remains constant. This is the block diagram which is used as a drive for induction motor. At the input side, we are applying constant frequency and voltage AC supply. This is AC to DC converter. It produces DC signal. Capacitor is used to avoid, uh, to minimize the ripples. Then this output is given to three phase inverter, which produces AC signal where we can vary frequency and voltage so that the speed of induction motor can be changed. So this is about variable voltage and frequency three phase induction motor drive next is quick revision of ups that is uninterruptible power supply from the exam point of view you may expect the question like this what is ups and explain its block diagram so this is the corresponding block diagram as the name indicates whenever ac mains fails then due to ups you will get a continuous supply to the particular appliance so this is the block diagram at the input side, we are providing 230 volt uh, input signal, AC input signal. First block is rectifier, so it converts AC signal into DC. Then we are connecting UPS batteries. Uh, actually, string of batteries, which I mean different batteries are connected in series, which is called string of batteries. 
this output of batteries is dc so again we want we are uh, we are using inverter which converts dc into ac signal then output of this inverter is given to the step up transformer it will generate 230 volt required ac output so this is the block diagram of ups next is let us quickly revise EV batteries, that is electric vehicle batteries. First, we'll talk about performance parameters of EV batteries. There are different performance parameters. So first is cell voltage. Battery is used to convert chemical energy into the electrical energy and it produces EMF, that is electromotive force between the two electrodes. The value of EMF is usually in the range 3 to 3.2 volts. So, Whenever the cells are fully charged, there is a maximum EMF. Whenever cell discharges, then EMF reduces. Next is ampere hour capacity. It is basically multiplication of constant discharge current into time for which the voltage drops. This downward arrow indicates voltage is dropping. Time for which voltage drops below the final value. So this multiplication factor is called AH capacity, that is ampere hour capacity. One more term related to this ampere hour is ampere hour efficiency. It is ratio of ampere hour discharge to the ampere hour charging. Next, watt hour efficiency. It is simply ratio of energy supplied by battery during discharging operation to the energy supplied by the battery during charging operation. Next is reserved capacity. Every battery has certain a typical reserved value, reserved capacity. So it indicates the time for which the battery tolerates certain amount of drain current without affecting, without reducing the terminal voltage. So this is the reserved capacity of EV battery. Next parameter, energy density. That means how much amount of energy per cubic meter is stored in the battery. So it is expressed in watt hour per meter cube. Next is state of charge, that is SOC. It represents amount of stored energy with respect to the total storage capacity of that particular battery. Next is depth of discharge. It represents the battery capacity that is discharged with respect to the maximum capacity of that particular battery. Cycle life, it represents number of uh, charging charges and number of discharges uh, of that particular battery before it reaches to some predetermined criteria like predetermined energy levels. Next is self-discharge. As the name indicates, uh, if you are not providing, if you are not connecting the battery to any load, that means under zero load conditions, the reduction in the capacity of a battery is called self-discharge. Now, last part of this unit, architecture of EV battery charger. From the exam point of view, you may expect the direct question like write a short note on architecture of EV battery charger. So this is the simplified diagram. It shows both onboard charging system and offboard char charging system. As the name indicates, offboard charging system is outside the vehicle, whereas onboard charger charging system is inside the vehicle. Both the system, onboard as well as offboard, consists of AC to DC converters and DC to AC converters. This is front end of the system. So for onboard, we are using AC socket, then AC to DC converter is front end converter and it also contains power factor correction system which gives uh, improved power factor that means power factor uh, equal to one and it also gives it also produces low harmonic distortion ac for ac to uh, dc conversion that means this block we can use multi-level diode bridge system dc to dc conversion is done by using zcs or zvs which is zero current switching or zero uh, voltage switching system in case of off-board system the blocks are same only the thing is that as i mentioned it is outside the vehicle and it gives high power rating charger it also produces fast battery charging so this is about the architecture of ev battery charger so that's it for this unit and that's it for power devices and circuits so thank you all the best for your exam